Hi everyone, here we are again at Greener Pastures Veterinary Service and I have with me today Dr. Jim Bertram. This is, uh, Jim is a chiropractor for animals and we want to spend a little bit of time giving you an opportunity to learn more about this through our program, My Dog and Me. So I'm going to introduce Jim to you. He's going to tell us a little bit about his education, a little bit about the whole situation, and then we're going to show you some of his work on two particular animals that we're going to bring in to do that with today. So Jim, tell me about yourself and where you're from and what do you do? Okay. Um, thanks for having me here. It's okay. Um, I'm from Sagertown and uh, uh, been in chiropractic practice, human chiropractic practice, uh, since 1987. Okay. So that's 26 years, mm -hmm. I think, plus. And um, uh, I, in 2007, became certified as a veterinary uh, chiropractitioner, is the, is the term. Uh, so then I'm certified to adjust animals. Um, and I've been uh, affiliated with Greener Pastures since that time. Um, so, and I was in practice, uh, human practice in Sagertown for about 25 years and last year and a half uh, in Meadville. Well, now let me ask you a question. There's a lot of chiropractors in the film book. If I have a bad adjustment that I need or whatever, I can look that up. But how, what makes you decide or what makes a vet decide to go to animal chiropractic medicine and why don't they all do that? Mm. I mean, I would think there's quite a, quite a need for it. Yeah, it's a, it's a, that's a good question. Um, it's it's an, a new, uh, an up and coming uh, in the treatment planning with, mm -hmm. with veterinarians. Um, as part of uh, the veterinary curriculum in the past, when we talk about years ago, uh, certainly decades ago, mm -hmm. uh, chiropractic wasn't something that was mentioned, nor was rehab, rehabilitation, um, uh, things like that. Uh, now you're seeing that as part of the, the veterinary uh, curriculum. So now when you're looking at treatment planning um, for a specific condition, chiropractic makes the list. And so therefore now you're seeing chiropractors affiliate, uh, excuse me, veterinarians affiliate with chiropractors mm -hmm. more for some conditions. Um, I, I think we have a long ways to go in uh, developing where we where we as chiropractors fit and where the chiropractic adjustment uh, fits in certain veterinary conditions mm -hmm. um, I think it's there's probably more of a role than than where we have it right now but it's just kind of evolving um, as we know with anything like a, in a, a college curriculum mm -hmm. it takes time to evolve uh, usually kind of a generational thing because sure. you have instructors of a certain generation and mindset and, and school of thought. And then as that changes, it's almost like a generational mm -hmm. change. And then that comes around to the treatment planning. So it's almost like a two or three uh, well, step process. Sure. And, and I think all of us of the older age, such as I am, we remember going to the veterinarian. It was shots, it was spade, it was neuter, and that was just about right. it. And anything else that came along, forget it, you Too had bad. to maybe go to a specialty place such as the place in, in Pittsburgh on Camp Horn Road. Correct. But um, now we're seeing a lot more done and, and with our programming of My Dog and Me, we have seen the laser, we have seen the x-ray and the diagnostic tests that have been done right. here. We've seen so many things, they've branched out in so many directions right. and that's why we wanted to make sure that we gave the people an opportunity to find out right. more about this. Now whenever right. we're doing the adjustment with your dog first, correct, we're going to be talking about um, what all what all happens and what type of dogs are candidates for you? Right. Because I have always been under the feel, under the impression that the majority of dogs that come to a chiropractor are the performance dogs. But we'll talk right. more about that once we've right. got. What's your dog's name? Honey Bun. Honey Bun. Honey Bun. I hope I remember that. Honey Bun will be in here, and we will go through that and give you right. some ideas, and then we'll talk as we're showing right. some things, so that gives people something to look at. So why don't you get Honey Bun, and we'll go from there. Sounds great. Okay, perfect. <laughs> We're back, and we have with us Honey Bun, who is a 13-year-old golden. Mm -hmm. You've had her since since she was a pup. Yep, from the shelter. Okay, look oh, from the shelter. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, she's a well, mix. You've had a good life. Mm -hmm. Yes. She has. And of course, she has her steeler collar on. I don't yes. know whether she wants to wear that right now. Yeah, it could be embarrassing. Could be embarrassing. Maybe <laughs> we should have taken the steeler collar off. <laughs> anyway, so let's talk about Honey Bun and what you've done with her. Um, if anything, while you're beginning to mm -hmm. talk about that. I've had older dogs, and I've noticed that she's very mobile. She mm -hmm. moves very, very well. Obviously, right. We, she, how often do you do stuff with her? She she gets adjusted um, 
about every three to six weeks, maybe three to eight weeks. Oh, that's all. Uh, yeah, we we'd like to do once a month, but you know, life gets busy, and we yes. and we always neglect our own. <laughs> uh, but um, she gets um, about every three to six, eight weeks. Um, she gets adjusted. Or if we notice that there's an issue, um, uh, her her only problem she's she's been very well dog mm -hmm. she's 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 a great dog. Um, we notice that she has some uh, a little bit of weakness, a little arthritis in the back end. Well, let's let's talk about how a dog gets to you. So okay. the dog comes in, sees mm -hmm. one of the veterinarians here. Correct. And the veterinarian determines that because of give me some give me sure. three examples of situations that would um, involve you doing dealing with the dog. Sure. Number one is uh, said that they suspect a disc herniation uh, okay. in the spine. Disc, hernia disc uh, is the structures between the vertebra and the spine, and it's a, a shock absorber as well as a strength uh, giver to the spine, and oftentimes they will uh, swell or pooch out, uh, uh, bulge, uh, what we call herniations. Uh, if they suspect that, um, that's one of our prime uh, treatment okay, targets. Okay, so the vet then contacts you. That's right. I, I'm here every uh, Tuesday morning, then they would be put on my schedule. They would have whatever veterinary treatment that they're uh, having, uh, which uh, medications, uh, maybe some physical rehab, and then, then to, to me. In the and that's course given as that. an option then? What's that? You're given as an option yes, that they can yes, take. Yes, okay. then, then the owner can decide. So that. that's one way that you get a dog. How yeah. else would you get one? Um, uh, after uh, surgery? Uh, uh, potentially, we, we have done uh, after oh, orthopedic thing. surgery, say um, there was a, a cruciate uh, tear mm -hmm. uh, in, in, in the uh, rear uh, leg, um, maybe because that dog had been limping or three-legged mm -hmm. for quite some time, that during the, the rehabilitation process afterwards, um, that I would be called into, hey, let's, let's f fix any imbalance that there might be in the back uh, end of the dog. Um, and um, then that would help with the, the rehabbing and the, and the uh, getting back to normal after surgery. Okay, now, and just to remind everybody, we did do a whole program out here at one point with Edie, who Correct. is a physical therapist, so you right. work very closely with her, with yes. the veterinarian. Right. How does a dog get to see you? We need to know that because we're at Greener Pastures, and that's a little right. different. I personally deal at Connie Out Lake Vet. Correct. So if I have my collie or my uh, problem child, my lasso, that has an issue, how do I get my dog in to see you? Okay. There's, there's two ways. Obviously, if, if, the, if you're a client of Greener Pastures, you see one of the Greener Pastures docs, and they determine the necessity for chiropractic. If you go to your, your doc... Um, you, if you are talking to them about a specific issue and you want to ask them about incorporating chiropractic, if they concur that yes, that would be something that would be part of the treatment plan, then they can send a referral um, and we have a referral form and they would describe what's going on and if x-rays were taken, what the x-ray findings were. Uh, sometimes we've had the, the uh, uh, x-rays uh, electronically mm -hmm. sent um, and then that does meet the obligation that they that we have that formal communication and oversight by them they're in control we then send records we when when I when I um, uh, type in my note and then uh, uh, we have a little uh, chart of the spine mm -hmm. that we show where we found any issues then that is faxed back to them um, so that they are in charge, they have that, th they are the referring doc. And at the same time, when it's done here, there's always at least one, usually two veterinarians mm -hmm. here at, at the time so that there is supervision of me mm -hmm. as well as there's that f formal uh, oversight by your, your doc. You said there are two different ways a person yes. can go. What are those two ways? Yeah, there's two, the, the two ways, one is you can be certified through the, I always have to, I think I get the names right, International Association of Veterinary Chiropractitioners. Um, and then there's the American Veterinary Chiropractic Association, and they both have um, a, a tract you know, a, a, of courses to, that they, they provide. Okay. I got a uh, uh, certified International Association of Veterinary Chiropractitioners. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, there are some specialty seminars, for example, like an equine adjusting um, that you can take, but and, and but not for certification. Do you do that? Yes. You do the horses yeah. and yeah. things like that. Yeah. yeah. Mostly horses. Horses. Uh, Don't tell me you do pigs and goats. 
my goat. Your his and, goat, okay, uh, that's interesting. And I've adjusted a couple cows. Cows? And, uh, so mainly it's dogs, horses, um, occasionally a cat. I was going to say and, a cat. Um, then what I'd say, uh, cows, goat. Okay. Well, now, how often does Zoe come? You said whenever she first started, she came how many times in a row? Actually, no, she comes every four to five weeks. Every four to five, right. and that's just for this adjustment. Yeah, right. and that's just because what Lily told us to do. You know, Lily told us Lily, that was about the... Speak? Yeah. Because I wanted to stay ahead of it. Yeah. So we want to, being that she is a competitive dog, now mm -hmm. in the summertime, she's not as bad because she's she's running on a softer surface that she can grip. Mm -hmm. um, now that we're coming into the winter, she's going to run on a, a thick oh, rubber matting, which is harder on her because right. she cannot grip it. So That um, might be the four weeks instead of the five right, weeks right. or something so like that. Right, so we adjust to what she tells right. us body-wise mm -hmm. if she needs it four or five weeks. Um, but if you stay ahead of it, it's like it's so much better for the dogs, and especially for the competitive dogs. Um, even for the seniors, I'm sure you see that if you stay ahead well, we of it. We were talking about that. Right. Using it on a senior dog. Yeah. It is much easier on the dogs. They mm -hmm. don't have to take a day to recover. You're staying ahead of the process. Right. And that also leads to uh, when we had talked earlier about treatment planning, which is, um, is, is, is difficult and easy all at the same time. Um, you know, like I said, Lily kind of told us what the right interval would be, and I'm a big believer in that. But for example, if we have a disc herniation dog, um, the the protocols are pretty pretty well laid out for that. We like to do a, a series of five adjustments uh, over like a four to six week period. If it's a disc dog, mm -hmm. if it's a muscle strain, say there was a muscle strain in the neck, that's usually one or two adjustments. We kind of make make the plan up because again if you do an adjustment the dog's fantastic um, you, you don't do five adjustments on that dog. How old is she? She is eight and and if I could um, I just thought about this I have a 13 year old chihuahua at home Chi Chi mm -hmm. which um, we've talked about we had her coming in on she has a deterioration of the spine mm -hmm. really bad I mean we don't the vets here don't even know how she's walking it's so bad in her neck and her spine um, she would go through most spasms where she couldn't even move. She, to this point, I'm trying to think how long it's been that we've done this series. Um, we did chiropractic and we also did laser. And she is not having any effects of that now. So well, the treatments can also, um, you know, it can stop the progression of things too. And um, she's doing wonderfully from, from having both. So, so. it always eight and you started these treatments when she was... She's How probably been here? doing them a good four years, I'm guessing. I don't think so. mm -hmm. yeah. She tore a cruciate about two or so. Mm -hmm. um, we started with laser and then into the Cairo as she, because what happens is, as we know, when we get a, a, an injury, your body never functions quite the same. Mm -hmm. um, so she does compensate. Um, on her rear end, and you can see actually if they can see it, she will sometimes see how she doesn't put as much weight on that back, back right. Back right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. She's sliding on the table. Yeah. So that's what causes the injury um, in the, yeah. in the Get back. Get some tightness up in here to compensate Yeah, I can see that, that whenever she's yes. standing here, she just, yeah. yeah. And that's the cruciate she tore, mm -hmm. so she tends to put more of her weight on the other side. Um, but now, whenever she's not performing anymore, we'll probably continue with some laser as far as maintenance with her then, yes. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it just I, it really Good just dog. keeps her able to do what she wants to do. And um, she's a very active dog, so it depends on your dog, too. Mm -hmm. But if they're active and they like to do active things, you need to keep them as, as comfortable as possible.